that is the eyes have it this is chapter number 7 from your book of aster the eyes have it by ruskin bond so before we start with the chapter let's talk about ruskin bond who is ruskin bond ruskin bond is an indian author right so he lives in india and he's still alive and he lives in masuri right so all of you who have been to masuri or who have plans of visiting masuri in the future try and go to his house visit his house and the good thing is that he visits a shop as well in Masuri. I've forgotten the name of the shop where every Saturday or every Sunday he comes, he sits over there and people can go and meet him and uh, he gives his autograph on his books right? and he talks to people and I've even heard that if you visit his house uh, he will entertain you. So if you ever go to Masuri, try and meet Mr. Bond, Ruskin Bond or James Bond. Right, so he is an Indian author and most of the stories and most of the books that he has written are for children. Right, so children learn a lot by reading his books. So if you ever again get hold of some of his books, buy them, purchase them, borrow them, check our library when you go to school again and read some of his stories very interesting stories and most of his stories are about the hills because all his life he lived in the hills right that being Masuri so most of his stories are about hilly areas now this story the eyes have it from the name itself we get to know that this story deals with the eyes Right, so something about the eyes. Those who have read the story know what the story is all about. And those who have not read the story, I will give you a brief introduction before I start. So what happens is that there is this person who is traveling by train from one station to the other. In fact, he is on his way to Dehradun. And the sad part is that he is blind. He cannot see. Right, so he's sitting in his in the compartment on his berth when suddenly now because he cannot see he hears he hears that a couple have brought in a girl right and that girl is also going to travel along with him so he gets very curious now he cannot see the girl so he's curious about this girl and while the journey is going on both of them begin to talk now he is trying to pretend that he is not blind because he doesn't want to show the girl that he is blind and that she should feel sorry for him and all that right so he's pretending that he is not blind he's looking out of the window though he can't see anything but still he is looking out and um, a time comes when the girl has to leave because her station has arrived and she gets off and she goes away and then this man again is very sad because now he knows he another passenger will come and then again he has to start the same old routine the same old story of trying to converse trying to talk to the next passenger and that's where the twist comes right and I can't tell you the twist right now when we finish, when we are about to finish the chapter, that's when the twist comes. That's the time I will tell you the twist as well. And the twist leaves everyone amazed. So let's, without wasting time, let's start with our chapter. The hills, the eyes, have it. Now you can see the chapters over here. Read a story of an interesting train journey. I had the train compartment to myself up to Rohana. Then a girl got in. So he says the compartment, the place where he was sitting, it was empty. Only he was sitting over there. And then a girl came in. 
the couple who saw her off were probably her parents so a father a mother also had come to see this girl put her in the train make sure she's comfortable must have been her parents they seemed very anxious about her comfort and the woman gave the girl detailed instructions as to where to keep her things when not to lean out of windows and how to avoid speaking to strangers right so before the couple could go before the train could start they they gave her instructions three instructions where to keep her things not to lean out of the windows and avoid speaking to strangers always you should also remember this never start a conversation with a stranger and if a stranger starts one with you right be polite but try not to continue the conversation because you don't know what kind of people they are out there they said their goodbyes and the train pulled out of the station pulled out meaning the train started moving as i was totally blind at the time my eyes sensitive only to light and dark so he says i was completely blind and the only thing that his eyes could uh, was sensitive to only to light and darkness i was unable i was unable to tell what the girl looked like so he says because i was blind i could not make out what the girl looked like but i knew she was slippers from the way they slapped against her heel so while she was walking the slippers kept hitting her heels so that's how he knew ki she had worn on slippers it would take me some time to discover something about her looks and perhaps i never would now why he would never be able to figure out her looks because he could not see her but i liked the sound of her voice and even the sound of her slippers are you going all the way to dehra i asked dehra means dehradun short form dehradun so he says are you going all the way to dehradun i must have been sitting in a dark corner because my voice startled her so as soon as he speaks this girl gets a start he suddenly a voice out of nowhere she gave a little exclamation and said i didn't know anyone else was here right so she she exclaims exclamation and she says that i didn't know that someone else was sitting next to me well it often happens that people with good eyesight fail to see what is right in front of them they have too much to take in i suppose so he says normally people who have proper eyesight who have eyesight in fact they don't bother to notice so many things what's in front what's at the side because they have too much to take in i suppose because in one glimpse only they try and see what's there whereas people who cannot see or see very little have to take in only the essentials whatever registers tellingly on their remaining senses so he says people who have no eyesight or very little eyesight right they try and take in only the essentials for them trying to figure out what's there what's not there is very important because they're curious but people who have eyesight who have good eyesight they're not curious as to what's in this corner what's in that corner i didn't see you either i said but i heard you come in so he says i didn't see you so but i heard when you came inside i wondered if i would be able to prevent her from discovering that i was blind so now he did not want to show the girl that he was blind to so what he does is so what he says provided i keep to my seat i thought it shouldn't be too difficult now everyone has seen <clears throat> a blind person when a blind person moves first thing his hands move forward to feel for things you all must have noticed this so that's why he says that 
provided I keep to my seat, I thought it shouldn't be too difficult. So he says, in order to make the girl not know that he was blind, he says, I wanted to just sit in my seat because if he had got up, then she would have seen that he was unable to see, he was blind. The girl said, I am getting off at Saharanpur. My aunt is meeting me there. So she says, Ki, my station is Saharanpur because her aunt was supposed to meet her over there. Then I had better not get too familiar, I replied. Arms are usually formidable creatures. So he says that I better not get too familiar. He says we should not become very familiar with each other because aunts are very formidable creatures. Formidable meaning? Come on. Formidable means someone who shows a lot of power of power right someone who is very intimidating right who does not accept someone very easily those are formidable we have certain we have many many teachers whom the boys are scared of in school so what are they? They are formidable teachers, right? They, <clears throat> because uh, people get frightened, people are afraid. That's a formidable person. So he says, aunts are usually formidable creatures. Where are you going? She asked. To Dera and then to Masuri. Right, so she asks him, where are you going? And then he says, I'm going to Dehradun. And then from there, I'm going to Masuri. So you see, Ruskin Bond also was from Masuri. And to reach Masuri, you had to get off at Dehradun. From Dehradun, take a taxi and move to Masuri. Oh, how lucky you are. I wish I were going to Masuri. I love the hills, especially in October. So this is what the girl says that she also wished that she could go to Masuri because she loved the hills especially in the month of October yes this is the best time I said calling on my memories the hills are covered with wild dahlias the Sun is delicious and at night you can sit in front of a log fire and drink coffee he says October he also agrees with her and he says that October is the best time Three reasons why the hills are covered with wild dahlias. Now dahlias are flowers. The sun is delicious. Now delicious doesn't mean tasting the sun, eating the sun, right? But the, the sunshine that comes, right? It is very nice. It's not very hot, right? Where your skin can get burned, but it is just the right temperature. So he says the sun is delicious. That's why in the hills you find people sitting out just enjoying the weather and he says that night you can sit in front of a log fire and you can drink your coffee another reason most of the tourists have gone and the roads are quiet and almost deserted now in the summer vacations that's in the month of may and june people like to visit the hills why because the weather is so nice so but by october most of the tourists have gone away. Everyone has their own work, their own jobs, their own things to do. So everyone has gone, left. Right? The hill stations are empty. The roads are quiet and almost deserted. Deserted meaning very few people on the road. Yes, October is the best time. She was silent. I wondered if my words had touched her or whether she thought I was a romantic fool. Then I made a mistake. And what's the mistake? He tells her what is it like outside. Now obviously, 
he is pretending not to be blind so he so that means that he was trying to make her believe that he could see and this question was completely wrong what is it like outside now why is he asking her what is it like outside why can't he himself just see so that's why he says i made a mistake what what is it like outside i asked she seemed to find nothing strange in the question had she noticed already that i could not see but her next question removed my doubts and so now he's worried it's worried that maybe she's already noticed that he is blind but what she says next clears all his doubts why don't you look out of the window now if she knew that he was blind she wouldn't have made that statement so he knew that the girl had not yet figured out that he was blind why don't you look out of the window she asked i moved easily along the berth and fell for the window ledge so easily quite slowly slowly he moved towards the side and he felt where the ledge of the window was the window was open and i faced it making a pretense of studying the landscape pretense meaning you're making trying to show that he is looking outside looking at all the fields the trees the roads i heard the panting of the engine the rumble of the wheels and in my mind's eye i could see telegraph posts flashing by so he heard he heard the panting of the engine right the engine running he heard the rumble of the wheels the wheels moving he could hear and then in my mind's eye mind's eye meaning that in his mind he could see the telegraph post now he was blind he could not see the telegraph post but only in his mind he imagined that telegraph post you can see in the picture down below also all the all those poles over there so the telegraph poles were flashing by flash meaning one after the other they were just coming in front of him have you noticed i ventured that the trees seem to be moving while we seem to be standing still so he tells he says this to the girl that when you sit in the train then everything else seems to be moving and you, probably you have noticed this too that everything seems to be moving except you right so the trees are moving anyone you see on the road they are moving and but you are doing what you are sitting still but it's actually the opposite you are moving in a train and everything else is still so we'll stop over here today we've done two pages we have another one and a half page to do there are one two okay so there are only two meanings given over here only two meanings uh tomorrow i'll try and complete this chapter with you so you have no homework as such you can just go through the chapter all those who haven't yet been through it go through it in fact what you could do i am not telling you the words look for 10 words from this chapter make sentences in your copy literature copy only give the name of the chapter the eyes have it right look for 10 words if you feel you do not know the meaning of those 10 words you have a dictionary you have google take it up look it up over there and make 10 nice sentences not the class 3 class 4 level sentences but 10 nice sentences sentences which have a meaning to it as well and try and do this work and i will finish this chapter the next time um i log in over here right so till we meet again try and finish doing those sentences right have a nice day bye